Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome everyone to our online NPTEL course Environmental Chemistry and Microbiology. This course will be taught by Professor Shudha Goel and Professor Anjali Pal, myself. We are from the Civil Engineering Department, uh, IIT Kharagpur. We have divided this course into two parts. First part is Environmental Chemistry that will covered will be covered by myself and second part uh, is the environmental microbiology that will be taught by professor shudha goel in my first module i have uh, discussed about the acids bases and salts in the second module i have discussed about the chemical equilibrium in the third module i uh, told about the uh, chemical kinetics and in the fourth module, I uh, covered the uh, catalysts. This is my fifth module and uh, here I will, uh, this is my 23rd lecture, here I will cover the chlorine chemistry and disinfection, this is the part A. Now, in this lecture, uh, I will cover disinfection, uh, history of disinfection practices, uh, chlorine chemistry and effect of pH on disinfection. We all know what is disinfection. Okay. So, uh, there is some difference between disinfection and sterilization. We all know that disinfect by disinfection we uh, kill the pathogenic bacteria, pathogenic microorganisms and by sterilization we kill all types of microorganism. Now, what is pathogens? Pathogens are the disease causing organisms okay? and um, what is this? Uh, they grow and multiply within the host, we all, we all know that. The resulting growth of microorganisms in a host is called the infection. Under this pandemic that uh, COVID situation we all know all those things, uh, we are very much concerned about all those things. Now, pathogens associated with water include bacteria, uh, virus, protozoa and helminth. These, these things you will uh, know more, much more elaborately in the environmental microbiology part with Professor um, Shudha Goel. Um, and here I will just uh, briefly tell you about the disinfection, how we make this uh, process with uh, mainly chlorine and um, other substance also I will discuss little bit. Anyway, so in the intestinal discharges of an infect, infected individual may contain billions of these pathogens which is which if allowed to enter the water supply can cause epidemics. We know epidemics right, epidemics, pandemics and um, we all know now it is so much uh, important and endemic also. So, this, they, these are the three types. Now, carriers may not even necessarily exhibit symptoms asymptotic asymptomatic asymptomatic means there is no symptom okay mm, exhibit symptoms of the disease hence more caution should be taken to protect the water there are many diseases which um, uh, which are water borne means water ca is a carrier for those diseases uh, like typhoid cholera these are very common okay so uh, we have to uh, protect our um, means water supply the water in the water supply systems so that this type of contamination does not happen okay otherwise it will create that epidemics okay because a lot of people will drink it and uh, will get epidemics so that we should protect this is the this is our job environmental engineer job now early history it is it has not come in one day hundreds and hundreds years it took so, what is the history? This is the early history 
Okay, so, you will see that this, this coronavirus it has come here worldwide it is came it has come in a very huge way, but this this type of thing also happened earlier. Say for example, during 14th century a plague known as the black death broke out in Europe you know all the developing developed countries that time 25 percent of the population died okay, due, due to this um, disease plague it was called plague. Now, during 1664 to 65 you see that an epidemic swept over London okay, 14 percent of the population died okay. until 18 eight, I have only told if only 2 3, but there are many many such case occasions okay. until 1854 there was no definite idea about the cause of disease why it happened, why this type of epidemic or plague um, swept over during that time, the cause was not known okay. and how it is transmitting from people to people, person to person okay. that also not known. Science of because the science of bacteriology was not developed that time, that time um, the cause and how it is happening uh, those things are not by um, the microorganisms all those things were not um, developed. Okay. Now, earlier history, earlier history of disinfection, this is a very, very, very important thing. Okay. John Snow and John York in 1854, who are, they are very famous person, a localized epidemic Asiatic cholera broke out in London. Uh, the source of infection was water from the Broad Street pump. Okay. And the well, why it happened? The well was contaminated by wastewater coming from a house where one person was suffering from the disease. There was actually broken sewer. From the broken sewer, uh, this contamination happened to that pump water. Okay, and uh, the bro the broken sewer was carrying the water from another house where one person was suffering from this disease. Okay, what is Asiatic cholera? Okay. This, this was exhaustive uh, scientific uh, studies were done by these two persons and then they, they realized that this is a milestone, it is called a milestone, the, it is realized that there is some relationship like this human waste, disease, drinking water and disease. So, human waste, drinking water and disease, there is some relation okay, from, the, from this um, uh, incidence it is known. Now, uh, and slow sand filtration uh, started before that 1830 you see that um, to purify the water. Now, early history of diseases some important inventions and observation. Now, we know we can use chlorine, we can use ozone, we can use other things uh, to kill the bacteria the science is developed, but that time that time um, it, we, we did not know people did not know this thing. So, early history and some important observation that is why I, I, uh, I collected the science of bacteriology was originated um, at 1870 the germ theory of disease was developed the famous person Robert Koch was able to grow a pure culture of the bacterium causing anthrax in 18 you see the years 1875 then microorganism causing typhoid. 1884, Asiatic cholera 1883 and many other diseases were grown in pure culture. So, microorganisms were grown in pure culture and it was also that time known that water can serve as a major vehicle to transport many diseases. This is another thing that is observed in 1892 during the cholera epidemic actual microorganism causing cholera were found in the river water. So, there was epidemic and the actual microorganism was found in the river water that was used for water supply, the river water was used for the water supply. So, it has come to the water supply. Okay. This is another milestone for the knowledge of water borne diseases. Slowly, slowly you see how it is developing. Okay. In 1872, the typhoid epidemic in Switzerland was caused by contaminated spring, spring water. Okay and the contamination occurred in a remote place spring water. So, remote place and then the water traveled underground. However, the micro microorganisms are still present in the water. 
So, even if the contamination source is far away, um, but still it is carried and then it is contaminating the water. This is these are also very important observations. Now, his then uh, then it is known that okay, there are some micro microorganisms that causes the disease and we have to protect our water because it is water borne disease and so then what we will do? What practice we will take up? Okay, disinfection practice we will take up. What is the disinfection practice? Okay, that time chlorination of water supply was started in 1885 on emergency basis. So, for example, sometimes epidemic started, so the water was treated with chlorine, okay, emergency basis. During epidemic epidemic situation hypochlorite was used. So, uh, used for treating water for disinfection purpose okay. and from 1994 1904 regular chlorine treatment of public water supply was started in England. So, it is no more on emergency basis regular practice was started regular treatment was started after that from 1908 the treatment was started in the uh, with calcium hypochlorite in many cities of the US in a regular basis you see. So, we um, so uh, people could observe that this is um, useful thing disinfection practice is useful. So, they have started the um, process and all are chlorine based you can see hypochlorites calcium hypochlorite sodium hypochlorite chlorine all those things. So, all are chlorine based. From 1912 treatment of gaseous chlorine with gaseous chlorine started and from that time chlorination practice has grown very rapidly. So, you can see here typhoid and paratyphoid death rate. So, here you can see that uh, death per uh, this, this, this many population. So, you can see here this is the 1900 uh, this is the um, year and then you see it is coming down, it is coming down. So, it is 1935, you can see here from here to here it has come. This is uh, some studies were carried out in the US. Okay. From 1912 treatment with gaseous chlorine started and then uh, chlorination practice uh, uh, has grown very rapidly. Um, as the disinfection with chlorine started in the US, there was a sharp decrease, this is the sharp decrease. Uh, 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 sharp, sharp decrease in the number of people affected with waterborne disease such as typhoid as shown in the figure. So, you can see that so typhoid is a um, waterborne disease. So, some microorganisms causing this uh, this disease um, is uh, carried in the water. So, if you disinfect the water then that uh, uh, microorganisms will be killed will die and then the water will be safe like this. So, um, you can see here um, that slowly slowly chlorination process was taken up. Now, here disinfection uh, practice you can see that there are two types of curves here the typhoid you can see it is coming down it is 1946 to 1970. Okay. So, it is coming down from here to here, but here this is a hepatitis it is not coming down may be it is uh, going up or otherwise at least you can think it is not coming down. Okay. So, why it is so? Because this is the virus causing virus. So, disinfection practice uh, uh, does not ki, uh, uh, is not um, effective to kill the uh, virus. Okay. Uh, typhoid uh, is caused by bacteria. So, it is uh, it can um, remove it can kill those types of uh, microorganisms. Now, here comes the chemistry of chlorination uh, how chlorine so uh, uh, what we should use chlorine we should use or some other hypochlorite we should use and what is the relation between them how one form is convert here also chlorine chemistry is also very important because chlorine also can uh, exist in different forms like it can be as chlorine. So, chlorine gas means chlorine zero oxidation state it can be as uh, OCL minus it can be other forms also. So, uh, this is also very very uh, important to know okay. um, and also it is um, means uh, pH dependent different forms uh, exist according to pH their concentration varies. Now, what is there you can see chlorine reacts with water 
this we have learnt in our school days that if you uh, allow chlorine to dissolve or to um, uh, allow to react with water then it will form HCl and HOCl hypochlorous acid and hydrochloric acid hypochlorous acid and hydrochloric acid and you know the equilibrium uh, expression. So, this is the equilibrium constant. So, uh, if, uh, K 1 is the equilibrium constant for this reaction uh, and it is nothing but H plus ion concentration into chloride ion concentration by uh, and into HOCl concentration by chlorine concentration and that is nothing but 4 into 10 to the power minus 4. At 25 degree centigrade, you know that you have to mention the temperature because this varies with temperature. Now, the equilibrium predominates from this, you can easily understand that equilibrium predominates in the range of pH 2 to 3 and at the time of chlorine water addition. When you add chlorine in the water, immediately this reaction uh, uh, occurs and then uh, the pH goes down. Okay. And um, you can understand that because H plus is produced. So, you, if you can remove the H plus, then slowly, slowly the reaction will shift towards the forward direction, is not it. So, if you increase the pH, uh, more and more H HOCl will be formed okay? and um, chlorine concentration will reduce. Okay? Now, if you increase more, then another reaction will start. Uh, what is that? So, so, that is why it is told that uh, in lower pH this is uh, more pr uh, predominating. Now, hypochlorous acid means this one HOCl is a weak acid you know that uh, uh, HCl is a strong acid. So, it is completely dissociated, but HOCl is a weak acid. So, it, it is always in equilibrium with H plus and OCl minus. Now, again H plus if you can remove then more and more OCl minus will be formed from HOCl. And the uh, equilibrium constant for this reaction is H plus concentration into OCl minus concentration by HOCl concentration, and this is nothing but 2.7 into 10 to the minus 8 at 20 degree centigrade. Now, from these two reactions, you can easily understand that the relative amounts of chlorine, HOCl, and OCl minus depend on the pH. Okay. So, at low pH, at very low pH chlorine will be predominating, medium pH this will be there more may be and at higher pH uh, the HOCl will be decomposed to form the OCl minus. So, at higher pH this will be present predominantly. Now, the question is that among these three which one is the these are all called free chlorine residuals. Now, actually the question is that which species is disinfecting actually. Mm, chlorine or HOCl or OCl minus. Um, actually, all three are disinfecting agent, but HOCl is very efficient. Efficient. Okay. You will learn more in the that environmental microbiology part uh, how it how it is killing the bacteria and all. Anyway, so the here distribution of chlorine and hypochlorous acid. The first reaction, if you consider the first reaction. Then you can see the pH range that is why it is selected 0 to 4 and you can see the curve here percentage of chlorine. Um, so, here 0 and here 100. So, 100 0 percent 100 percent okay. and the percentage of HOCl it is in opposite direction O uh, 0 percent and this is 100 percent. So, if you increase the as you increase the pH you see say for example, at pH 1 you see the concentration of percentage of chlorine is about uh, say 90 percent and then this one you see 10 percent. Okay. As you increase this concentration I uh, means pH say for example, at pH 2 this is about 50 percent this is also about 50 percent. Then at pH 3 uh, the chlorine is say 10 percent and here it is say 90 percent and at pH 4 uh, no chlorine is present almost 100 percent it is HOCl. Mm, that means, that thing I explained in the previous slide it is following this one. So, pH with the increase of pH slowly slowly more and more HOCl you are getting is not it. So, this is the effect of pH why it is important because um, to get the disinfection what pH will choose lower pH or higher pH or medium pH which pH we will choose that is the question and 
and also if uh, our water has certain pH at that pH how the effect how effective it will be the disinfection process that is also important. Now, there is another effect uh, for the uh, this uh, uh, effect of chloride also. So, for example, if you increase the chloride concentration you know by because sample you know sample may be from any place. So, chloride concentration may vary also. So, if there is lot of chloride ions present then what will happen? Once chloride ion is present, so you know that last Atler principle, so equilibrium will be shifted in this fashion. So, chlorine concentration will be more. That curve I have not shown, but with with the variation of chloride ion, how the proportion of chlorine is to HOCl will vary. More chlorine will be there at higher concentration of chloride. Okay, um, and uh, so how will be the curve? We can draw the curve. I have not shown it, but we can draw the curve here. So, for example, here for example, it is at say 500 uh, milligram per liter chloride concentration. So, if it is 250 milligram per liter then how will be the curve that you can think if you know the equilibrium expression you can easily think how the curve will vary okay? or experimentally you can see and match with your speculation. Now, this is the distribution of hypochlorous acid and hypochlorite ion this is the second equation second equation that is predominating at higher pH say for example, 4 to 11 okay, effect here also effect of pH is there. So, pH you see 4 to 11 and then he in this side it is uh, percent HOCl and this side percent OCl minus. So, here you can see from starting from 0 it is 100 and it is opposite direction 0 to 100. Now, say for example, I choose 7 pH in the 7 pH at 7 pH you see 80 percent for example, HOCl and 20 percent is OCl minus, but if you um, bring it to 9 you see it is may be below 10 percent and it is above 90 percent. Again at uh, 10 it is almost uh, 100 percent OCl minus. Okay. So, depending on the pH as you increase the pH more and more OCl minus is produced. Okay. Now, uh, but OCl minus ion establishes the equilibrium with H plus ion as shown in equilibrium 2. What is equation 2? What is equation 2? You can see here that it is an it is an equilibrium. If you put this one, then also you have seen H i. H i is decomposing decomposed to H uh, hydrogen and iodine. If you combine hydrogen and iodine, then also it will produce the H i. If you in, uh, if you allow in a closed vessel to reaction to go on, you will either you start from this side or that side, you will get the same composition. So, equilibrium right, so, equilibrium is like this. So, here also uh, once you start uh, from OCL minus, it will establish the equilibrium uh, like equation 2. It does not matter whether chlorine or HOCl or OCL minus is used, it establishes the same equilibrium depending on the pH, it will vary how much proportion of how uh, which one is there at how much proportion or concentration. Okay. Now, what are the different things we can use for chlorination? This is calcium hypochlorite, this is sodium hypochlorite. Okay. I remember in our now you can see that uh, that aqua guard Kent that uh, filter water filter everywhere even in the restaurants and um, in the public places, but in uh, long time back it was not there. Okay, so, what we used to do long time back when we used to especially in monsoon season when we used to go to some restaurants before drink we are carrying something which is nothing but geoline. Okay, geoline and then after going to the restaurant when I we asked for a glass of water we used to put a few drops of the geoline there and we wait for some time then we drink the water okay that that why it, it is so because it is also sodium hypochlorite certain percentage and then when we add it it will disinfect and the water and then it will may it will, it will be safe for drinking uh, so we used in, in our child i remember in our childhood days we used to do this okay Hypo, uh, hypochlorites are used as solid um, or as solutions of NaCl, we can use both. Either we can uh, put some solid there in the water during disinfection, or we can make some solution and then we can put proper dose. Chlorine decreases the pH 
we have seen chlorine when reacts with water it gives HCl plus HOCl. So, some acids are produced. So, it is decreasing the pH and when we add the this one say for example, or this one NaOCl then it will form Na plus and OCl minus. So, how, what will be the pH effect uh, that that is again dependent on the equilibrium equilibrium. Okay. Uh, so, it will if you develop the equilibrium equation you will see that uh, because it is a salt of uh, NaOCl it is a salt of weak acid means HOCl and strong base okay, NaOH. So, if it is if something is salt some salt is um, generated from a weak acid and strong base. So, when it is hydrolyzed so what will be the pH you all know that because it is already discussed in the hydrolysis of salt that is in the first module. Okay. So, that thing happens. So, that is why it is written chlorine decreases the pH whereas hypochlorite increases the pH of the solution. So, according to the pH of the solution your disinfection also may vary. Okay. For this you know the references um, Swar McCarthy again the same book I am recommending that uh, chemistry for environmental engineering very nicely explained all, all the steps uh, you can read it more elaborately it is written there. Now, as conclusion uh, for this lecture I can tell that uh, to prevent the speed of waterborne diseases disinfection is commonly used uh, I have already explained this has a long history. Now, most common method of disinfection is chlorination the chemistry of chlorine is very interesting hypochlorous acid and hypochlorite produced from chlorine is in water also have disinfection property. The concentrations are pH and temperature dependent the chloride concentration present in water has also strong influence on it that I discussed also thank you.